point out a couple of uh, upcoming things. I'll note that we do have some minutes for January 20th on this evening's agenda. Um, and in terms of upcoming items, uh, next Monday, March 16th, we'll have a presentation at 7 o'clock from the Board of Elections. And we'll have a work session uh, that will basically be a bundle of three things, which will be the update from the sustainability manager, a discussion of energy efficient efficiency incentive program, and discussion of streetlight purchase options. The following Monday, March 23rd, we will have uh, two work session items, one an update from the police chief, and the second one a continued discussion of parking adjacent to commercial areas. Then the following Monday, March 30th, we will not have a meeting. It's the fifth Monday of the month, and it's right before we dive deep into budget, starting the following Monday, April 6th, when we have a presentation from the city manager on her proposed 2016 budget. And then starting that Thursday, April 9th, we have budget work session, uh, and we have budget work sessions scheduled the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I would note that the following one is Wednesday, April 15th, not Thursday, April 16th, because we have a... Uh, Montgomery chapter meeting with the, no, not with the county, but anyway, there's a chapter meeting that Thursday night, so we've scheduled the budget work session for Wednesday. Uh, at this point, we will go to public comments, and that is on anything, on our agenda or not. Son. Uh, yeah, I'm Robert Engelman, uh, 500 New York Avenue, and I want to thank uh, Seth, who represents me, for encouraging me to express a view officially that I expressed to him uh, in relation to the dog park. Uh, and that view is that uh, there's nothing wrong with the dog park. If the city wants to develop a dog park, that's just fine. But it is inappropriate for the city to use public funds for a dog park. Um, I say this based on basic uh, public school civics learned here in Montgomery County, uh, that when there is a private benefit for a particular group of citizens, it's inappropriate to ask the entire public to shoulder that cost. Uh, owning a dog is certainly more than legal uh, and commonly done in Tacoma Park, and I mean no disrespect to dog owners in Tacoma Park to say this, but it is a choice, it is not a necessity, and it is inappropriate to ask that those who do not own dogs and who will get no benefit from a dog park uh, be asked to help subsidize the construction of a dog park. Um, it's a private benefit for a select group of people who own dogs, um, it's not a public benefit for the public as a whole, which city expenditures should be. There's an easy way to resolve this, in my view. Uh, we have a precedent um, that uh, is very recent, and it was surprisingly successful, uh, in which the, uh, a number of public, uh, a number of citizens in Tacoma Park uh, took it upon themselves to raise money themselves to help the city to bid for the McLaughlin property. And that was quite successful. I believe something over $100,000 was raised for that, which is in the general order of magnitude of what I think the uh, dog park is likely to cost. Um, so I would suggest that those who would like to see a dog park built in Tacoma Park take it upon themselves to raise the money privately uh, and that the city would take that the proceeds from any donations that resulted from a fundraising drive to build a dog park and use that to set a budget. Uh, by which the dog park would be built, in other words, relying entirely on private funds rather than city funds. Now, I say this not because, um, just because it is expensive. I think it would be the case if it's not expensive, but it seems a no-brainer to me, given the city has to face tough financial allocations, that it would choose not to allocate spending uh, for a particular private benefit for a particular group of people that will not benefit those who are not in that class. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Uh, Mr. Loveless. Okay. This is Pat Loveless, your official police delegate. One thing I'd like to see is I'd love to see that dog park built as soon as possible. The 
because uh, it would be a great place for people to get together as well as dogs. And even if you don't own a dog, you can always go over there, sit down and meet people who do have dogs. You might change your mind on dogs. And I'd like to see that done as soon as possible because, again, it's going to be another meeting place for our people at Tacoma Park. It's going to be a great way for our, our people to uh, participate in, in things going around them rather than just sit around and watching it on TV. They can come down and enjoy the dog park like they do other areas, and I'd love to see that happening. I'd love to see it because I, I, I'd be one of the ones to go down there and enjoy it every so often. Especially when you guys open it up, I want to see it or hear it or whatever you want to call it. But yes, and again, on uh, March 21st, it's on a Saturday, there's a big demonstration going on down in Washington, D.C., in front of the White House, an anti-war demonstration and a general peace demonstration. Also, we'll be addressing the problems they've been having lately with p police brutality. But uh, and we, we cannot stand to have that go on. We're we'll marching against racism also. And I'll be down there. And we've got to remember, we've got to can't let this go. It's a great opportunity for a uh, few, few people to participate. We are giving you an opportunity to speak out. We're giving you an opportunity to come down and participate in something. And it'd be, I think uh, you young guys who want to go out to uh, learning about voting, come on down and see what the issues are. That would be one of the main things. See what the issues are going on around you. And that would be a great place for people to meet around people. And when the things like this are going on, it would be the dog park. A lot of people would be sitting down and you'd be able to talk to them. Yes, it would be a great place for people to meet each other and get the issues out in the air. You know what? Although the dogs might not understand, but I think they do give a woof. They do. They do give a woof. Another thing too, if you have a, uh, if you built a two-story dog park, at least you'd be able to tell everybody you got a wolf over your head. Yep. But uh, not with the dog jokes. But anyway, I'd love to see that dog park built. And I'd love to see people getting together and meeting each other. That in itself might cut down on the violence in our areas when people of different culture and different character get to meet each other. I'd love to see it. I would love to see it. Thank you very much for letting me speak. And everybody else, come on down and start participating in your meeting and come out and speak. I'd love to see more of this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, council members, I'm Joe Edgel. I'm here representing Tacoma Dogs tonight, and I live in the thousand block of Elm Avenue. I want to thank each of you up here for uh, supporting the dog park effort up to this point. Um, I believe that all of you, maybe minus one, uh, signed the petition supporting the dog park, and we appreciate that. Um, this is an effort that uh, is going to benefit all of the residents of Tacoma Park, much like a basketball court only benefits people who play basketball. It is something that enriches our entire community, and it's something that Tacoma Dogs and all of our supporters appreciate. Um, as you know, we have over 1,000 signatures. Uh, the mayor knows that specifically because I think he gets an email each time somebody signs a petition. Oh, is it just me? Uh, I, I think it's just you. <laughs> um, so I wanted to go over a couple of things in the two minutes that I have remaining. Um, I wanted to remind the council of the commitment to open the dog park this fiscal year. Um, and there was specifically a commitment previously in the June 2nd city presentation that it be a two-phase dog park. We've scaled it back to have uh, one phase to save money. We'll talk a little bit about that, uh, I know, later when you guys uh, have your discussion. Um, Brian Kenner also said that uh, no matter what the scenario is selected, it's to have the dog park operational in fiscal year 15. Uh, now, I understand Brian's not around, but uh, we've laid out a timeline here which will allow that to occur to get the gates open on this phase one of the dog park. Water uh, year-round is essential. This was taken today uh, at Arlington County's Madison Dog Park, and they had the water running. Dogs need water year-round. Uh, this is a $144 faucet from Home Depot that, that uh, is freeze-proof. These are used on farms. Uh, this is the kind of thing that can provide water year-round and have minimal maintenance. 
These particular things we would like to be installed too, but we understand from talking with Arlington that these have some maintenance problems during the winter, so we would suggest that this particular thing be turned off during the winter. This be left on, this be turned off, and that way it provides water year-round. Uh, there's a misperception that somehow trees are incompatible with dog parks, and there's lots of dog parks around that incorporate trees. In fact, shade is extremely important to ensure that dogs don't overheat. Uh, this was shot today at uh, Madison Dog Park in Arlington. Uh, they have uh, protection around the trees. Uh, this, these pictures were shot earlier at uh, Patterson Dog Park in Baltimore. They also have trees with small fences around that keep the dogs away from the base of the trees and away from the roots. This is the simplified design you'll be looking at tonight, and I wanted to highlight as I close the donated effort that the community has put into this. Um, Eric Saul, who's a local architect, has donated over $10,000 as part of Tacoma Dogs in design services. We've had hundreds of volunteers that have donated their time to clear the effort. That's worth thousands of dollars. And um, we also have put in a lot of effort on our own, researching things and working with the city staff to make sure this happens. And here's a picture of all the folks who worked on it this year, the over 100 volunteers. We think it's time to get it built. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Pat Rumbaugh. I'm here to speak about the bulletin board proposal in parks uh, with a sponsor. One of my many dreams is to have a bulletin board in every play space in Tacoma Park, and who knows, maybe in America someday. Recently, Let's Play America, our nonprofit, received a city grant, and one of the uh, many things that we're doing with this grant is we're having our guide to our playgrounds updated and uh, in April all of you or all the residents of Tacoma Park will be receiving one in the mail. I've had many people tell me that uh, they never would have gone to some parks because they wouldn't have known about them if they didn't have the guide. So uh, I asked Daryl about the bulletin boards because this is something that I've wanted for a long time and she says Pat well I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll look at some online, and we did, and they cost on average six to $800, and that doesn't uh, count the, man, the manpower or woman power to install it. So Daryl suggested, Pat, you're good at asking. <laughs> Why not ask someone to help build these uh, bulletin boards? So uh, late uh, fall, early winter, I uh, was walking my dog, and I saw it, uh, an eye-catching Landis construction sign and next thing you know I called them and we emailed back and forth and they granted us they said yep we will die, design build and install a board for you well I was thrilled but we weren't done yet uh, in January I went over to meet with um, Landis and I got to meet one of the partners Chris Landis and he um, took one look at the playground guide. I showed him a few things that we had, a flyer for an upcoming winter play day. And he says, Pat, how many would you like? <laughs> Usually, I have something to say. I didn't have anything to say. I was so stunned. So I got to tell you, all over America, ball field fences, scoreboards, and even in Tacoma Park, we have uh, a name of Steve Francis, which Steve Francis is on our own basketball court, which you may know that he helped donate funds for that. Uh, if you have any difficulty with this, I hope you'll ask me so I can help. Lastly, if I may, Jay uh, Keller w wanted to speak today. He's the co-chair of the Recreation Committee, and he's not here, and he's for this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Good evening. Hi, I'm Joe Brown, a community activist. Um, thanks, Joe, for the presentation uh, on the dog park and then the coming update on the dog park tonight. I'm looking forward to it. Um, the discussion on the Carroll Avenue Bridge last week was very informative and thorough. Um, Pat, myself, and many, many others would like a thorough discussion and resolution one day, not too far in the future. 
on the use of drones in Tacoma Park. Yeah. Um, this is a, a national issue. You guys are ignoring it, not discussing it. We bring it up almost weekly. And we can fill this room if we have to, but we don't want to have to do that. But we can do it. The city of Tacoma Park is demanding that something be done about it. We saw the outpouring of the information that I gave out on July 4th parade. And they actually started to cheer as I was coming down the avenue. Um, so it's a looming nuisance and public safety issue. And we discuss public safety issues in this room all the time. Why not discuss drones? Um, lastly, there's an exhibit out in the hallway out here. It's a photo display in the lobby of the second floor. I advise everybody to check it out. It's really wonderful. Pat and I checked it out before the meeting tonight. It's by Alicia Cunningham. There are large photos with quotes underneath of the people who were photographed, and I'll just discuss one of them. It was a photo, and I hope I get her name right. Alu Aluwa Toyan, age 21, uh, quote, I used to think the greatest relationship was between man and woman, but I've learned otherwise with my daughter, Neria. Hope I pronounce her name right. Everything I learn, see, hear, and feel, I bring it all back to her. So I make sure it's filled with peace and love. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? OK. Uh, we'll go to council comments. Council Member Stewart. Thanks. I have a couple of um, updates tonight and thank yous. Um, the first is to thank and congratulate uh, Jen Wolford and the amazing women who put together Tacoma Parks, um, which I believe is the, our first International Women's Day event yesterday. Council Member Grimes and myself were able to attend, and there are probably close to 100 women, young girls, men, and boys uh, in attendance, uh, reading poems, singing songs, and it was a wonderful <coughs> event. So I'm, I'm glad that we were able to do that this year, and I hope we can continue it. Um, my second thank you and congratulations is to the Snow Angels. Um, as we've talked about before at council meetings, the Snow Angels is a partnership between the city's uh, lifelong Tacoma program and the difference makers at the Tacoma Park Middle School. Um, they've been out a couple of times uh, this winter, but I think this past Thursday they got a real test. On Thursday and Friday they were out with their teacher, Mr. Gehring. Uh, tackling the snow and ice covered streets um, and WTOP actually did a, a very nice um, interview with one of the uh, students at Tacoma Middle School who's a difference maker. Uh, I'm hoping the snow is behind us and they can put their shovels away uh, <laughs> for the year. I hope so. Um, but I also know they may be uh, having some plans to do leaf raking in the fall. So I'd just like to thank uh, the city staff, Lifelong Tacoma and the difference makers um, at Tacoma Park Middle School. Uh, finally, today, uh, the mayor, mayor and council member Smith and I attended the National League of Cities conference. Uh, we'll be going there tomorrow as well. Uh, we had a great opportunity to hear President Obama speak today. Uh, and he spoke about the need to ensure equal opportunities, particularly for jobs in our communities. And he called on all of us to create a virtuous cycle of change, which means ensuring equal opportunity in our communities and expanding opportunities so those, as in his words, he said, who put in the blood, sweat, and tears can get the jobs they deserve. And as he was speaking today, I was reminded that in Tacoma Park, the Tacoma Park Youth Collaborative has just started uh, a training and challenge for young people aged 16 to 19 years old uh, to get some training in uh, job skills. It started last um, Wednesday night, and it goes uh, each Wednesday night between now and April 8th. They are still uh, accepting young people in the program. And so if anyone would like to, I'm not sure if it's up on the website or not. I'm sure they can contact one of us. Um, if anyone knows any young person, 16 to 19, who uh, would like to get some training in job skills, things like resume writing, interview skills, effective online communication. Um, and I just want to thank everyone who's been involved with the Youth Collaborative. It's the Tacoma Park Rec Department. Cheer, Gandhi Brigade, Montgomery Community College, the Washington Adventist University, Identity, and Making a New United People, as well as the Tacoma Park Rec Committee. So, thank you. Councilor Robert Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, my wife and I have uh, passed another milestone in our life. Uh, yesterday, our granddaughter, uh, who lives in Hawaii, 
had a uh, healthy five pound, two ounce baby girl, 17 oh, and a half inches long. Congratulations. Anastasia Renee. Love it, love it, love it, love her. The milestone is, that makes me a great grandfather. Wow. Join the club. I don't know how that happened. Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, thank you. Love it, love her, love her. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to echo Councilmember Stewart's comments about uh, the Youth Collaborative. Uh, the, the whole idea came out of um, the program the, that former city manager uh, Brian Kinner developed with uh, Councilmember Siemens and myself and um, uh, the, for, the director of the Recreation Department, a, a youth jobs program. Something similar to what they do in the District of Columbia, but we tried it last year as a pilot. We found out that uh, the kids needed additional skills. So that's how the Youth Collaborative uh, came to be. And I think it's an excellent program. I hope that the city continues to put uh, money into it and we continue to grow it each year. Uh, switching gears, I'd like to follow up with the city manager on uh, Man Up using the Recreation Department on New Hampshire Avenue on Friday night, on Friday night and whether that's going to happen. It will. They okay. had phone challenges today, but they were making sure that somebody else got back to, to Okay. Rain. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I'll just chime in briefly uh, with uh, a comment or two on the National League of Cities conference today. Uh, in my experience, that's always a good conference, and it was good to hear President Obama's remarks. Uh, it was also good to hear some discussion by the uh, EPA administrator and the uh, Secretary of Energy and the Deputy Secretary of Transportation uh, <clears throat> about some federal issues that affect us all. And uh, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, discussion among first-tier suburbs, meaning suburbs that are uh, around larger cities and uh, hear some interesting comments from an official from the Housing and Urban Development uh, Department about the uh, potential for the Community Development Block Grant programs changing uh, and how that might be, in the end, advantageous to us. I had always assumed that changes to that program would be disadvantageous <laughs> to it, to us, so I was glad to hear that there was a potential opportunity for it to be advantageous. And secondly, I just want to uh, note with pride that the uh, I was one of the signatories of the uh, amicus brief that uh, Mayors for the Freedom to Marry uh, filed with the Supreme Court on Friday. Uh, 225 of us mayors and a number of uh, cities, I think somebody said 38 cities, and Tacoma Park is one of those, signed on to the amicus brief, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the Supreme Court before the end of this term in June. So I'm thankful to my colleagues for indicating the city's support for that as well. And seeing no other comments, we'll move to city manager's comments. I don't have any comments. Okay, then we'll move to legislative update. Um, I don't have much. If and anything. our legislative liaison. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've got nothing. So the one thing I wanted to note was the vacant and blighted uh, property mm -hmm. bill has been withdrawn after an unfavorable report from committee. So I don't know the details about that, but that's been withdrawn. And, and I'll just add that the... Uh, House Bill 690, uh, which is the uh, tax duplication bill, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, testify along with a number of other mayors last week at the Ways and Means Committee on Wednesday. Uh, I pushed an amendment that uh, caused the Maryland Municipal League to support with amendment as opposed to support uh, because I felt it was needed to, have to add teeth to the bill so that there would be actually a reason that the county would have to uh, move forward with discussions with municipalities about tax duplication, as I had indicated in my comments last week. So the Maryland Municipal League uh, came in behind that amendment. I'm not sure that that amendment or that bill is going to have much uh, legs. Uh, I heard some, it was a it was very good testimony and the uh, committee was engaged with a number of mayors who were there, uh, but then there were some uh, negative comments from uh, members of the Prince George's delegation who were on that committee about, well, gee, Frederick was here because first there was a local bill for Frederick introduced and then the companion one statewide. And they said, well, gee, why can't we just 
do this local. You know, if it's working for people, we'll just, you know, let, let the counties come forward if they want to do it. And it's like, no, 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 you don't get it. That will not work. Uh, and then there was uh, there were some fairly negative comments from the uh, executive director of the Maryland Association of Counties, which nobody had a chance to rebut because he went last since he was in, in opposition. And uh, he mis misrepresented some facts. And so... Uh, there, as, as I assumed all along, there will be some work to do on that bill. Councilmember Grimes, you had another one? Yeah. I plan to visit Annapolis on Friday to testify before the House of Delegates Environment and Transportation Committee in favor of House Bill 995, which is the Child Safe Playing Fields Act, which originated with the Tacoma Park Safe Grow activists. And uh, it occurs to me, uh, well, we didn't endorse that bill uh, as a city council, but if any of my colleagues would allow me to uh, testify in favor of that bill in their names, I would be quite happy to do that. That bill introduced by Delegate Hickson with um, a number of co-sponsors would ban the use of pesticides in kindergarten through 12th grade and in daycare center uh, playing fields it is similar to bills that were enacted in Connecticut starting in 2005 with some revisions and in the state of New York in 2010. Uh, Has it been crossed out? Uh, not yet. Uh, it's not come to that uh, date yet. I, I will say I have, and uh, activists have been lobbying in favor of it with the Environment and Transportation Committee, which is chaired by uh, Kumar Barve, who is a Montgomery County legislator, and with the subcommittee that will hear the bill. So, anyway. And, and I'll just add that uh, there was some interesting discussion at the Maryland Municipal League Legislative Committee on this bill last week. Uh, it was, I, I ended up being the only member of the committee who did not vote to oppose the bill. Uh, and the, the sentiment that was expressed by the members of the committee was that they saw it as a bill that would prevent anybody from using anything on playing fields, uh, including organics, except the only option for removing weeds on playing fields was to pull them by hand. And so there was a great deal of consternation at this bill and, as I said, except for me, unanimous support to oppose it. Well, uh, if, if uh, any of you would like to uh, allow me to use your name in the testimony, I welcome that. Uh, then secondly, the Montgomery County Council has now sent to their Transportation and Environment and Infrastructure, I guess it is, committee chaired by Councilmember Berliner, Montgomery County Bill 5214, which is very similar to Tacoma Park Safe Grow Ordinance, which would ban the use of cosmetic lawn care pesticides. There are some differences from Tacoma Park's bill. That was introduced by Councilmember Leventhal with five co with four co-sponsors being Councilmembers Reamer, Navarro, Florine, and Elrich. And that was uh, introduced before council members Hucker and Katz joined the county council. Uh, there will be uh, two hearings in the transportation environment, whatever it's called, committee. Our public works director is supposed to be uh, assisting at one of them. Uh, I assume you know that. <laughs> Somehow you were recruited, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. And uh, public comment for that bill closes on March the 11th, which is two days from now. So uh, people who wish to support or, for that matter, express any other opinion about that bill <coughs> uh, have a couple more days to do so. That's Montgomery County Bill 5214. Thank you. Anything else on legislative items? Okay. Thank you all. Um, then we have one set of minutes to adopt. I'm assuming, I'm asking the clerk, you had... The, the two closed session pieces is if are they if, if we do the January 20th minutes it includes all three pieces or we do we do adopt those saying that there are three different pieces I, I mean I think you could adopt them together but I would like you to act on the two closed session ones okay and you could do it as a group or separately okay. or so so we have a set of three minutes for January 20th the regular meeting and the two closed sessions right okay so would somebody like to move adoption of those items? Move it. Second. Moved by Councilmember Grimes, seconded by Councilmember Siemens. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it unanimously.
Uh, we will now move to our regular meeting agenda. And the first item is the consent agenda. We have four items on it, including a single reading awarding a contract for field maintenance, and then uh, three providing for applications to committees. Would somebody like to move the consent agenda? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Moved by Council Member Smith, seconded by Council Member Stewart. Uh, we have a single reading ordinance, so we'll need a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Grimes? Yes. Council Member Mayo? Council Member Stewart? Yes. Council Member Siemens? Aye. Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Schultz? Mayor Williams? Aye. So that passes unanimously. Um, we will now move to work session. <coughs> and our we first of two items is the update on the dog park. Um, I do have some larger copies printed if anybody wants to see sure. it in a slightly larger. But we larger. also will have them on the screen. Oh, well, sure. I'll take a large print. <laughs> it's larger than the screen. Okay, great grandfather. <laughs> Yeah, there's just uh, two slides here this evening. Um, one is a um, copy of the revised layout. And this um, is revised from what was in the packet and what was posted on the web on Friday, correct? Or is this no, the same? Same. This okay. is the same. Yeah. It's just got a, a, some of the outlines. We added a little, a little color, uh, try to do, differentiate the various parts. Um, Let's see, uh, the history of this, uh, you all I'm sure are familiar, but uh, we've been enormously aided by Joe Edgel and Eric Saul uh, and Tacoma Dogs uh, working to get this site first selected. There's been a lot of discussion on the council about sites and locations. This was identified at a, several council m uh, meetings ago um, as the uh, primary site for pursuing for this fiscal year. Um, since that time, the city had hired an engineering firm to do uh, some survey work, um, locate the property corners, do some soil testing, and uh, identify trees and, and develop a topographic map of the existing site. Uh, so we got that information put together, and uh, Eric Saul and Tacoma Dogs uh, worked really hard on developing a concept plan. And uh, I think we might have presented that um, at a previous meeting uh, earlier in the or later last year. Um, since that time, we've had meetings with uh, several engineering firms. At that point, we were looking at getting some engineering drawings done to uh, formalize some of the concepts within the plan, retaining walls, stormwater management, various other aspects. Um, in conversations with those engineering firms, as well as with Park and Planning, who came out and walked the site with us, we got the strong recommendation to simplify the plan uh, both for cost considerations as well as site constraints. Uh, so we got back together again with folks at Tacoma Dogs and Eric and Joe and city staff, and this is the out outcome of that discussion of trying to simplify the plan. Um, so what we have is a site that's just about 10,000 square foot um, altogether in terms of uh, this initial design. Uh, it uh, would back right onto the Darwin Avenue parking lot and there would be an entrance uh, through a curb ramp cut right into the park. Um, the idea is to uh, do a significant amount of grading, uh, both uh, excavation grading as well as fill, uh, to try to establish a flat area or a flatter area of the park that would then be surrounded by a sloped area. Um, so you see there the flat area is identified uh, on, the, on the drawing. There would be a decomposed granite surface on that area. The slope would basically be um, excavating the existing slope. Um, a lot of the materials removed in that excavation would be used to fill up down uh, on the, I guess you'd call it, eastern end, because um, right now it's all on a slope, so we're trying to raise it up and cut it down and, and create a, uh, a flat space. That sloped area would uh, be fully available for the dogs. It's a two-to-one slope, so not extreme. Um, what we're envisioning for that location because of the slope and because of the site, fairly shady, um, is to use a canine grass product, uh, kind of an astroturf, if you will. Um, it's it's uh, able to be put on slopes, even greater slopes than those. Uh, will help with the erosion issue, and we've also got uh, plans uh, by way to deal with the stormwater runoff from, uh, from the steep slopes on the site. Um, 
significant number of trees will have to be removed uh, in order for this construction to take place, about 12. Um, some of them are in good shape. Many of them are in fair or poor shape. Um, the pathway you see through there um, that runs along that eastern edge would be a, a flexi-pave type permeable pavement. We have to make this ADA compliant, so it would be 2% cross slope and less than 8% all the way from the one gate to the back. That back gate you see there actually would tie into a kind of a uh, informal tr pathway uh, that extends uh, through that area so people coming from either direction could get to the dog park if they wanted to walk through the woods on the other side. Otherwise, they could park their car and, and access it from the Darwin Avenue side. Um, the second uh, page you have in there is a list of um, pricing and cost estimates. Um, these cost estimates came from a number of places. Some we have contract, uh, actual contract documents with some of these items in it. Others we did a little research. We talked to a bunch of different uh, landscape firms that do this type of work. Um, so it's a, I think it's a pretty, um, pretty reasonable cost estimate for these items. Um, again, when you're doing this kind of thing, it's a little bit new for us, so there could be surprises. Uh, but we think we've covered everything that we um, have identified so far. Some big unknowns at this point are what parking planning is going to require to allow us to access from their parking area. There is a section of land that we'll have to cross that's theirs. Uh, we have to regrade that land. It's currently kind of a dip, kind of a trench. We have to raise it up. There'll be a couple of trees impacted by that work. Uh, so we had a very uh, positive conversation with the park and planning staff, but of course he couldn't tell us what permits until he sees the final plan. Um, so where we're planning to go from here, based on comments we get this evening, is uh, kind of get, get a sense of the information out there um, and then uh, determine ne next steps to have a more formal conversation with park and planning about their permit requirements to determine if we want to go forward with this uh, as it's currently laid out or if there's changes, oops, you guys would like to see, um, to the drawings. And, um, and then to uh, identify um, funding and a time frame for, for moving forward uh, with the project. One quick question. Um, anything you can tell us about decomposed granite surface since I think of granite as not decomposing. Mm -hmm. Great, let me take that. In fact, I brought a sample. Ah. Uh, <laughs> there you go. This is pre Did you pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's on loan from Arlington <laughs> County. <laughs> it's uh, a, a, a stone product. Uh, it's permeable. It's uh, able to be used with the dogs with less of the effect of getting the dust and dirt on their coat. It, it uh, Tends, tends to hold in place fairly well. It's pretty common for dog parks. It's before the dog. This type, uh, what we're envisioning is that this would be three or four inches thick on top of a, a compacted soil base, so we're not planning to put um, any other stone beneath it. We'll probably use a geotextile fabric underneath to make sure that the fines from the soil don't work their way up uh, through the, the granite. Um, but uh, the application at this point will be fairly, um, fairly simple. And the, the maintenance on that, will it have to be kind of put back in place or will it stay in place? Yeah, no doubt. There'll be divots and, uh, you know, work that will have to be done to um, smooth it and, and add as, uh, as, you know, play takes place. Um, there will be a metal edge along the uh, walkway and then uh, there'll be actually a... Um, a uh, drainage trench between where the canine slope grass covered edge and the flat uh, granite is. So there'll be a, um, a filtration uh, drain that will run the length of that and put the water uh, that runs down that slope so it won't create mud or divots. Um, it'll be a French drain, French drain type system that'll run along that um, area and out to the back of the park and down into a, a drainage uh, swale in the, um, in the park. We also will have to do some uh, drainage work up on top outside of our property. Uh, any of you have been out there, uh, the um, tennis courts is kind of right on top near the, the front of that. Um, significant erosion taking place from that tennis court. The uh, whole corner of the tennis court is exposed by about 12 or 18 inches from, from erosion. So we have to, uh, we've had some informal conversations with the school, but we're envisioning actually doing some drainage and 
sediment erosion and stormwater work up there to capture that water that's running through uh, what would be the dog park land <coughs> and uh, connected to an existing inlet that's on park and planning property just outside the, the uh, parking area. So it all lends itself where the, well there are systems out there uh, for the stormwater. Uh, we just need to make sure it doesn't cause an erosion problem um, on the park itself. And did you cover any details on the water item? Well, uh, again, um, we just did some online research at WSSC's website, found out what a permit costs. They have a per foot charge for a water line work. We did an estimate assuming that we're tapping into the main water main on Darwin Avenue, running it along the uh, edge of the parking lot and then into the dog park area. So we're envisioning it will be fairly close to the entranceway. Um, and um, that, that's our best guess at this point, uh, the cost estimates you have in there. There's a WSSC <coughs> permit fee and then the actual uh, installation uh, of the water line itself and a charge for the cost for the fountain. And it, you have in there an assumption of what, of what type of water outlet with what kind of use? What kind of uh, fountain you mean? A fountain? The, the, the fountain. The, the water fountain? Yeah. Would, would uh, serve both, you know, it would have the uh, lower spigot for a dog bowl. It would have an ability for humans to drink the water so as well. So it would be the type that uh, Mr. Edgel's presentation showed that was uh, recommended to turn off in the winter? Uh, yeah, we would recommend even with a frost-free fr frost fountain to be uh, turned off in the winter time. We do that with all our parks. Um, so yeah, we would recommend turning the water off okay. in the winter time. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Grimes. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the report. Thank you to Tacoma Dogs and the advocates for the volunteer labor that has gone into this, including professional labor as well as uh, manual help. Uh, it's really great when people contribute to realize projects like this one. I do have quite a, I do have several questions. Uh, some of them, some of you have seen already. Uh, let me start with the trees. Mr. Edgel in his presentation showed protection fences, I guess, around some trees. Is that contemplated for this dog park? Uh, no, uh, there will be some trees left uh, that are existing trees. Um, basically because of the significant regrading work that has to be done, any trees within most, uh, I would say more than three quarters of that site will be affected by grade changes so significantly that it would not allow the tree to survive. So the trees that are outside that grading area will be left in place. Uh, we do plan to do significant replanting to meet and actually exceed the city's tree replacement That's requirements. That's one of my questions. Yeah, but th those will be off-site. Um, our park and planning uh, person um, advised us not to do many trees within the dog park itself. He said the record there is just not a very high survival rate for trees uh, within where, the Where dog would you park. do the replanting? Just curious. Well, we own quite a bit of land back in there, so bo both below the park where we're going to be regrading and raising the, raising the level of the land outside the dog park itself would be an ideal area since we're already impacting it for trees. Uh, and anywhere around the outside, park and planning may require us to replant on a swath of their land since we have to remove a tree or two from their property. Okay. Uh, we anticipate 20 trees to be replaced or to yeah. be planted, 12 to be removed. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll take your word for it that that's within the tree ordinance uh, ratios and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, as uh, some of you know, I am concerned about the water, and in particular, uh, there is an existing water fountain in Tacoma Piney Branch Park that is, my guess is, 250 feet from the entrance to the dog park, and it seems not unreasonable to me for dog owners to use that. It already includes a dog bowl. Uh, so it's set up for dogs uh, right now, uh, but failing that, um, you know, that, in other words, dogs who use our dog park would not under any circumstances go without water. So long as that county water fountain is operating, which it isn't right now, whether it's been turned off for the winter or I observed a broken pipe, as some of you know, uh, it needs to be repaired. But if it is working, then then the, it sounds like the operating conditions for that water fountain would be similar to the ones that we would put in if, if we did put one in. Uh, but I would ask that city staff explore getting the county to put in a water fountain uh, and pay for it. And it could be located on the, uh, the far end of their property, which is right adjacent to our dog park. 
Uh, if we could get them to pay for it, that would be great. So I'd, I'd ask you to do that. Uh, I have questions about the process here, uh, in particular because Mr. Edgell brought up in his slides some dates that uh, had been discussed in uh, the city council meetings previously. Uh, for this, would the would staff need a formal council resolution in order to authorize an RFP or, or not, or only when you actually grant it? No, no, I think once we have a contract that we would like to award, you would you would have to. So only, but authorize. but how but soon we would, would we you would anticipate want... putting out an RFP? Uh, well, uh, depending on whatever comments and changes come in uh, Assuming from the Assuming you get council. a green light right now. Yeah, I think we'd start working on the uh, RFP documents and run it by, you know, those folks that are more familiar with uh, what needs to be in those types of documents. And uh, we could have it advertised, I would think, sometime um, in March, early April. I would uh, suggest a 30-day or at least three-week posting period. So then we might get pricing back end of April, early May. Other comments? Sorry, sorry, I'm not quite done yet. Okay. Um, all right. So then, then it would come to the council for, uh, I guess, an ordinance, so a single That's reading right. ordinance to authorize the award of the contract. And um, sorry, I'm just so uh, Ms. Braithwaite, when it came to hiring an engineering, uh, I'm sorry, a, an engineering project manager, you remarked that trying to put out a position uh, opening in the spring is the worst time of year because the people are all busy then, so they don't look to find new jobs until uh, after the building season is over. Are you going to be issuing an RFP into the peak of the building season where the firms that would be likely to bid on this would already have all kinds of projects lined up well into the summer? I don't anticipate an issue. Uh, we've advertised for playground constructions all throughout the year. Um, the most difficult time for construction bidding is in the winter when they're not doing anything. So um, I, I don't anticipate an issue with that. So you, you would expect a firm to be able to start work pretty quickly? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, you know, depending on what the pricing comes back, we may come to you with some hybrid of recommendations. We may want to purchase some of the items and bid out some of the items separately. We have an on-call contractor who could do a portion of this if the term of the price for the contractor to do everything is too great. So. Until we see the bids back, we don't really know what we're, you know, what scope of uh, or scale of cost we're talking about. Okay, good. Uh, and one final remark: I would not like uh, to see the dog park prioritized over the Colby Avenue Park project or the Sligo Mill Overlook project, which are also community uh, commitments that were made. So, if there's any kind of scheduling or construction or whatever conflict, it would, uh, I'd like to see that raised with the council. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. We do anticipate going out to bid for the Colby Avenue playground um, this year. Uh, I don't anticipate going out to bid for the Sligo Mill playground this year. There's still yeah, I understand. Lots there's a lot left to be done. That's mm -hmm. not my uh, thing, however. Uh, <clears throat> and if you if you did go out to bid, are any of the issues that might need some additional work or some information the kind of thing that you would need to come back to us for any additional? Uh, information on or would you just put it out there with some bid options or something to take care of those? Yeah, yeah I think uh, cost and funding source is going to be the, you know, big things to figure out once we get actual pricing. Yeah, but so, I don't think we need to come back for a component of so, it. So that you could put water in there and get pricing on things and <laughs> if, the, if the, the need for how to do that evolved based on some of the information you got as Councilmember Grimes explored, that that could be accommodated in the RFP. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilmember yeah, Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Ms. Braithwaite. I uh, just had one quick question. That is, the original uh, dog park design had two separate areas for dogs. And I just wondered how um, the, that separation, what you know, the need was for the separation and why that's no longer needed. Well, I can't speak to whether it's no longer needed. Uh, it basically, we, we are left with one, uh, one wide dog space area based on simplifying the design. I think the original design that was brought <coughs> forth had two areas, one for low activity and one for high activity. In terms of the dog parks in the area, you find both types, some that are just open for all dogs and some that are separated by, by the two. 
we don't have the luxury of the space nor the budget to do a separate dog park and the thought is if we were to reduce this into two small sections it, it would kind of lose its usefulness thank you any other questions so are people comfortable with uh, proceeding to next steps yes mm -hmm. I sense unanimous agreement yes yeah and I okay. think I think that the um, we will see what the cost estimates come back to my guess is that the uh, proposal can be accommodated but as we go out I mean we'll, I'll be finalizing the proposed budget um, so we may have different information later at this point I think that this is something that could be accommodated okay good thank you and thank you to Tacoma Dog. All right. Uh, I think we can do the uh, bulletin board's discussion and uh, finish up for the evening. So uh, we'll move to our last item, discussion of the proposal for bulletin boards and parks with sponsor and or advertising sign. <laughs> Thanks. Um, as uh, Pat Rumbaugh mentioned, she uh, came forward with a, a proposal for bulletin boards in every park. Um, and uh, did approach Landis Construction, uh, who very, very nicely um, offered to put in these bulletin boards uh, to make and install them in both uh, City of Tacoma Park parks as well as park and planning parks within Tacoma Park. The, there are several different issues related to it that, um, that made me want to talk to you about it because I think that uh, we don't have a um, policy and we don't have a precedent for having what are essentially advertising or sponsor, major sponsored signs in our parks. Um, they certainly are common in other parks elsewhere mm -hmm. um, to more or less extent and for different purposes. The um, even if they didn't have um, the logos and the advertising on them, I would want to come to you because it was something for all of the parks. It seems like it's, it's something that you would want to at least be familiar with um, before it was approved. But in this case, there's one side that has the Landis construction logo and the other side that is uh, part bulletin board and part that advertises the nonprofit that Pat Ramba um, <coughs> runs. And... Um, so I wanted to I share with you the proposed design for that. Um, also let you know that um, some city staff were concerned because we had gone through a process of identifying what a standard kiosk sign should look like in Tacoma Park, especially if it's a city one. This, because it goes both between city properties and park and planning properties, may not fit into that category. But we do have a kind of an approved uh, design for that. And um, all of those things made me want to talk to you about it. So the first kind of question that I have is, are you comfortable with sponsor signs and or advertising signs in city parks? And are there some criteria or guidelines that you feel should apply to these? And before we do that, can mm -hmm. you just say anything about uh, <clears throat> where this is with uh, consideration from park and planning for those parks? So we know if we're dealing with a parallel process or we're first or whatever. I know that the, um, that there's been some discussion with park and planning staff, but it's not gone formally be before them. Uh, Pat, is that correct? Uh, March 17th next week is a meeting that I'll be meeting with them. Okay, so March 17th she'll be meeting with park and planning staff. Okay. So back to the number one question. Councilmember Seamus, did you want to address that, or did you have I, I more did. general comments? Well, it's, uh, I don't know. Maybe general, maybe specific. Um, first of all, I certainly appreciate the work that uh, Ms. Rumbaugh does and, and the uh, playful cities and, and playful Tacoma Park. Uh, all the, the work that you've done here in the city has been uh, not just good but amazing in many ways uh, because of your energy. Um, so I don't want you to be offended by my position on this, but uh, I do uh, have a problem with... Um, uh, commercial advertising on uh, the uh, playgrounds and, and other uh, locations. I think it's a, a slippery slope. I think, uh, you know, we could be renaming the, the municipal building. 
um, and uh, many other things in the city to take advantage of uh, <coughs> the revenues we could generate from advertising. And I, uh, I personally don't think it's healthy for the kids to be exposed to that much advertising. I think it opens up a can of worms for the, uh, for the city to define uh, what are, who are the, the good advertisers and who are the bad advertisers. And I, uh, I could envision a, a uh, uh, organization, a commission similar to the uh, Nuclear Free uh, Committee, uh, and that has become a very difficult uh, situation. So um, I think the example that, uh, that Pat gave of the Steve Francis basketball court is different in two ways. Number one, it's not a commercial advertising. It, it is a, uh, uh, it was um, a update to the basketball court that was paid for by uh, local uh, basketball star, um, but it wasn't for his personal gain or anyone else's gain other than maybe the recognition that it gives to them. It isn't trying to sell a product. And of course, it is not a uh, city at Tacoma Park uh, facility. It is a county facility. Um, so I guess that was kind of the, the part of my uh, uh, comment that relates to the question you put on the table. Um, I, but I, I do, uh, I'm going to go beyond that and say that you, know, you brought it up to the fact that we have uh, uh, identified a standard kiosk for use in the city, and I, I certainly would be open to discussion of uh, broadening that um, implementation and, and install ins installations of that kiosk uh, in the, um, all the parks, if that's what, what the desire is. Um, but I would, uh, at this point, have to be persuaded that the, um, uh, that a single Nonprofit organization should be uh, advertised in that way either uh, in all the parks. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have a contrarian point of view. I, I don't have any problem with um, advertising. I thought it was an excellent idea, Ms. Rumba, that you presented us. Uh, this is public private partnerships. Uh, if we wanted to limit it to nonprofits, I think we can do that. If we want to limit it to Tacoma Park only businesses, our businesses, our neighbors, our community, I think we can do that also. But I, and, and the other point is Landis is giving us these bulletin boards for free in a time where money is tight for the city. So, yes, we can look at other opportunities, but those opportunities, we would have to pay for them. So I think we should really consider, as a council, to take advantage of uh, these free bulletin boards, limit the amount of actual advertising, put restrictions on it, but I don't think we should say no to uh, this opportunity that, that Ms. Rumba has presented us. Thank you. Councilmember Grimes. Thank you. Uh, I, I too appreciate the efforts that uh, Pat and the play committee have put into making Tacoma Park a better place and uh, calling on us to participate in doing that uh, through play activities. And I also appreciate the initiative in bringing this forward. I'd say my position sits somewhere between Councilmember Siemens and Councilmember Smith's uh, in that I uh, appreciate this effort, but I don't see it acceptable as it, it currently is, but on the other hand, I see that we could explore modifications that would make it acceptable. And let me be specific about that. For one thing, it, from the sketches that we were given, it appears that only a quarter, one-fourth of the usable space would actually be a bulletin board. Uh, a quarter of it would be about Let's Play America and half of it would be about Landis. That is a very small proportion of usable bulletin board space for something that is supposed to uh, provide public benefit. So uh, any kind of evaluation should, as Councilmember Smith has already said, talk about the amount of advertising that a bulletin board could 
uh, a, a structure could have on it, but the current proportion just doesn't work for me. In addition, I acknowledge what the city manager said regarding staff reservations about the attempt to provide some kind of unity and design for kiosks of this nature in the city. Uh, and I note that the current proposal doesn't have any kind of city branding on it at all, much less uh, design elements that are shared. Uh, there's another principle here, which is one of fairness. I think Councilmember Smith was getting at this also. Uh, it's great that Landis is willing to do this, but perhaps there would be other companies in Tacoma Park or other organizations that would be willing to sponsor this, just as uh, organizations sponsor, uh, they, they'll adopt a highway. Uh, the OTBA in the past has uh, recruited businesses, including my own, unfortunately <coughs> fell by the wayside, but to maintain uh, the flower boxes and do watering along Carroll Avenue and Laurel Avenue and so on. So uh, I, I think that a, a principle that we should adopt here is competition, see who else might want to do this. Uh, perhaps Landis would be willing to build these things at a very convenient cost in order, in exchange for having a much smaller amount of acknowledgement on these things, but other organizations could sponsor them. Uh, and that that is a, a fairness principle that does enable us to have those bulletin boards. Uh, if, if we do establish that the demand is there, I have to say it's not completely clear to me that the demand is there for this space. I went and checked out one of the bulletin boards that does exist already, two-sided, in the Tacoma Urban Park off Westmoreland and Carroll, and uh, saw just a few flyers on there, and they, uh, m several of them were out of date. So I, I do wonder about the... Uh, the, the real demand here. And then uh, finally, I, I talked about competition, fairness, and uh, so on, letting others have an opportunity. Uh, OTBA, for at least three years now, has done this. Uh, the last couple of years, it's been a sit on the art thing. It's a public art where they go out and they collect donations, including from my wife and me, uh, to help pay for this, but other businesses do. And they create amenities, uh, no advertising at all. There's a sign that they put up with acknowledgments of the donors uh, in various places in Tacoma Park. I could even see OTBA or other organizations conducting a similar type of project where they would invite community members to create these things. Uh, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be in conformance with the city design, but it would show a lot of creativity and it would foster community involvement in an effort like this. Of course, we'd have to establish some kind of design standards for this, uh, construction standards, I should say. But, but that would be really cool. And they have had funding mechanisms attached to this. So, so those are just some thoughts. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not against the effort. I think it's a great initiative to explore, but there are uh, a lot of points here that need to be defined before I would be ready to move forward with it. Thank you. Councilmember Stewart. Great. Thank you. Thank you also for bringing this uh, to us and taking the initiative on this. Um, I think my opinion uh, lies very similar to that of Councilmember uh, Smith and Grimes. I favor uh, public-private partnerships. Um, when I immediately saw this, like Councilmember Grimes, I thought of Adopt a Highway um, as a similar model. Um, I do think it would be helpful if we had criteria in place and guidelines, um, as this might be something that comes up in other venues as well. Um, in looking at this specific case, though, I also agree that the uh, the advertising for the company um, is, is, is so prominent um, on this to go in our city parks um, that I would like to see if we could um, resolve that, go back to Landis, maybe entertain some of the things um, Council Member Smith put out. And I think there are other ways in addition to um, the sign if we, if Landis wanted, we could give them a recognition in a newsletter article on the website. I think there are other ways that we could provide um, um, them with some thanks um, in the community, um, but that wouldn't leave in my mind, which is a very large um, advertisement for them in our city parks. So um, I think we should explore the private-public partnerships, have some kind of criteria, um, and even explore other ways of thanking um, companies and businesses uh, that provide services, support for the community. And I'll say that <clears throat> I think I agree with uh, most of my colleagues on uh, the points uh, that uh, Councilmember Smith and Grimes raised. and. Um, some additional th thoughts that I had. Uh, 
if it was the proposal is for a bulletin board behind a locked glass cover. So I thought. No, no, that's that's our key. The, our kiosks. Have oh, that. oh, sorry, sorry. This would not have the kiosk that. does. Okay, I and, thought. And oh, that's I weird. And I do want to clarify. I think I put a little comment that you know, if we were to use the city's standard kiosk, we would look for an option that would not have a locked glass. Okay, cover. okay, okay, good. Uh, the other thought I had was uh, in thinking about possibilities for uh, opportunities for uh, others to provide some funding for these in some form. Uh, tonight, as part of our uh, consent agenda, we established the uh, appointments to the Commemoration Commission, and it could be one possible option for uh, saying to folks if they wanted to uh, commemorate somebody with right. uh, sponsoring one of these bulletin boards, that that might be a, a, people, a way that people would like to go. That's a good it, idea. It opens up some, some opportunities in our parks. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the direction that this is going, and I think it would be good to have these types of things in a, in a uniform way in our parks. I would be interested to know what Park and Planning thinks about this, whether there would be, it's, and it's like on the one hand it would be good to put them in all our parks, and on the other hand uh, it might just confuse people a little bit thinking that they're all our parks and not, you know, half of them are ours and half of them are park and planning, and and you know that's a that's a a, a difference that for some people just doesn't matter, and to to the extent that it might uh, confuse it and make it so that people are saying, well, you have your signs in the park, you you need to do something about this park. Um, they change the design. My my perception is that. Very few people know who owns which of our parks. Right. Uh, if you go and you see an MNCPPC sign, if you're looking for it, otherwise you hardly even notice it. And if you do and see it, you go, what's that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it would be good to do it in concert with them, but I would, I'm not sure it would be good to do it exactly the same. I appreciate that. I think, you know, park and planning has been, uh, at least uh, in the last few years, very active, very aggressive in trying to get partnership money and, and trying to get sponsor money. Right. Um, and that has caused some hackles to in some, you know, in some neighborhoods where it's, it's been yeah, a little cause, prominent. Because I, I like the idea of public-private partnerships. On the other hand, I have, I've always felt like, <clears throat> you know, why should corporations be able to buy putting their name on what is essentially uh, public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I come to it from that vantage point. Well, I, I appreciate it. I mean, there were some very creative ideas here. Um, I think, you know, maybe there's a little bit of brainstorming that I can do with, with uh, Pat Rumbaugh uh, and see if there's some folks get together and, and see if there's a, an option or two uh, that makes some sense for this. Uh, I am not certain that we'll be able to come back with a really good set of criteria, but at least if we can get something a little closer to, um, to something that works without as much of the advertising component, I think that would be nice. Yeah, because I, I want to make sure that we don't just uh, throw, what, throw, I'm not sure what we, cold, cold water mm -hmm. on, on this proposal because mm -hmm. I appreciate that uh, somebody is willing to come forward and uh, for for benefit for them and for benefit for for us uh, propose something like this we don't want to be seen as uh, turning down potentially good ideas just because we want purity right okay. I, I wanted to add something uh, which is that uh, OTBA does use uh, portable movable uh, sign uh, I'll describe uh, one of them uh, to to publicize events, uh, the events that OTBA produces, and sometimes just to do general promotions. So, for instance, they have one out at the uh, Old Town Gazebo uh, that sits on this plastic base. It's probably filled with water to hold it down, and it, you know it's just an advertising sign. I guess it's about <coughs> three feet by two. You know, it's probably a little smaller than three feet by two, but that is a possibility to get signage out there that's not permanent. It's uh, surely less expensive, a lot less expensive than a, than a permanent bulletin board. Something like that is not going to serve community bulletin board purposes, but it is a way, for instance, to, uh, to publicize events. And various businesses also have, uh, what do you call them, sandwich boards? Mm -hmm. uh, 
out there too. Just another method. Uh, they're they're very portable and they're temporary. Yeah. Sometimes they're not legal, but that's, yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we look. Oh, I, sometimes we look the other way. Uh, you know, I do. I think that there's um, a, a difficult balance often about advertising some things and, and making some things available and versus clutter. And so that's part of what we look at when we try to have some flexibility, but we also recognize that sometimes it gets a little much. Um, that's part of we're going to have a conversation about that for a really long time. Mm -hmm. On so. this, I think, you know, I like the concept of, of something that's permanent. I think, you know, um, the proposals for a well-made um, fixture that would not be require a lot of maintenance. So those are some pluses. But I think there may be some options that can kind of reduce that advertising component that might make it a little bit um, acceptable. The, the city uh, has, we, we've been talking about public-private partnerships. The city has been actively seeking ways to encourage sometimes mm -hmm commercial uses of our public spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. We instituted food pro truck programs right. uh, in recent years. Uh, we just recently did an ordinance on film permits to mm -hmm. allow commercial mm -hmm. filming in Tacoma Park. How about Both the bus of these stops? Are, hmm? The bus stops. Yeah, bus stops yeah. we sell. Yeah. They, you know, uh, these, are, these are commercial uses of our public spaces, and they are ones that we regulate. In other words, we set up the conditions by uh, which they can be used, and we can do the same with the book. We can do the same uh, with this. So, so that's an alternative to to consider. But it sounds like there's a desire to uh, see if we can uh, tweak this a bit. Councilmember like Stewart, did you have another comment? Oh no, I just oh, okay. okay. So, do you have some direction that you need? I think so. If you need something else, come back to us. <laughs> I will send it. And uh, thank you, Ms. Rumbaugh. Mm -hmm. And that concludes our meeting. We're adjourned.